October 13th, 9.36am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. <laughs> Let's go. Hey Nick, what is it? Is something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out the mas mask Damasque Glossy I bought. You bought this? Where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Mask to mask a publicity photo stuck into the court record. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did, but it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it! I'm the criminal! Me! 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 Ugh, he's at it again. I sent the calling card to Lordy Taylor. I admit it! But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but... That doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you... Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So, make sure to give me a guilty verdict, please? Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, Desi, honey. De De Bonjour. Well, actually... I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, you see, actually the thief is, um, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he's declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck! To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is masked to mask gay or not. But there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree. October 13th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number six. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Hell yeah. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. What did you say? Fine. Let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? No, I'm, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um, uh, who are you? I am Godo, legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case. Ah, he's the one that Detective Atme was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Ha, huh, none. What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. N never But you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before, either. <laughs> what an icon. <laughs> Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. E yes, but a mask in a court of law? Ha. Huh. Don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy's the real deal, alright, Nick? 
Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet Mr. Phoenix Trite. N Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this masked man? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, uh, Prosecutor Gobo? It's not Gobo, it's Godo, Your Honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break in two. Hmm. Well then, let's hear from the first witness. Um, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Ugh. The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking. We're listening. Y yes sir. Alright witness, first, let's hear about what you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes sir. Mask Damasque's crimes. Mask Damasque is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card on to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Masked Masque, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm. So then the actual identity of this Masked Masque is... M Mr. Gotto, what are you... We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Gotto. Blacker than a moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please. Proceed. Very well. It's only coffee after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you gonna do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do is show that it wasn't Mask Damasque who stole the urn. Mask Damasque's crimes. Uh, okay, so if we look at our evidence here, if we look at the urn, see it's supposedly priceless but has no monetary value, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Because his pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. And the urn is not a precious art piece. It has no monetary value whatsoever, according to Adrian's appraisal. So, let's present that. Objection! Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. W what do you mean? N Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I mean, from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Gotto, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Mask de Masque would normally go after. Uh, <laughs> hmm, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the Sacred Urn was not the work of Mask de Masque? Y yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Mask de Masque or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Gotto?
this coffee here. It's my own special blend. I call it Gotto number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got on my mind right now. Mr. Trite. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it wasn't Mask de Masque that stole the urn, then it must be someone imitating Mask de Masque's methods. A fake. A, a, a fake de Masque? Fake de Masque? That sounds so ridiculous. But I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm. Though I don't approve of Mr. Gotto's behaviour, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. It looks like I'm gonna have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lordly Taylor that night was in fact fake Damasque. Uh, let me see. Uh... I've forgotten exactly what the proof is. I know I can put together a few of these pieces of evidence, but I don't know if I get to do it just yet. The proof is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Ha! Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer and show us just what about this picture is so peculiar. Uh, it's this. This spot. It's right here, of course. You mean... Mask de Masque? I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch. Oh, they didn't fix the spelling of brooch. I thought they did in some versions, but they didn't in this one. It's the brooch on de Masque's chest. A breach? Here? Bailiff, get my steed, you need to retreat at once. A, a brooch, Your Honor. It's a sort of clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, I see now. But the mask de masque in the security camera photo... Ah! He has no brooch! It, it's spelt with two O's, not, not OA. I don't know why they haven't fixed this. That brooch is the same as the emblem on de masque's calling card and serves as his symbol. But a thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this Mask de Masque is a fake. I mean, if this, this is supposed to be a secret symbol, then why is it on the publicity photo? Hmm. I, I've been fooled again! Hmm. <laughs> uh, order, it's true, undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how... How could you have overlooked this? I I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I... Hey now. If you're gonna have a pity party, invite me too. M Mr. Gotto, you deserve some blame in this too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh. The brooch you're talking about. Do you mean this? Ah! That's Mask de Masque's brooch! Stop pronouncing brooch incorrectly. I'm not, I mean, they're pronouncing it right, they're spelling it wrong. Where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? He must mean the Ami Fei statue. Why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. Uh, this guy is one cool customer. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? 
that friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there too. Hickeys? Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch? Uh-oh. Order, order in the court. Mr. Goddard, let's see that brooch. I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. God, Goddard's so weird. <laughs> Hmm, she, I mean it, appears to have been torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. Damasque's brooch. <sighs> brooch. Oh, brooch. Uh. <sighs> Added to the court record. Ha, huh. you mess with Gotto. And you get burned. Uh, he's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh? Yep. One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh, silence. Hehehehe, <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What's clear? Zvary! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? W well, yes, that's right. Huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. <laughs> well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Acne, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. They'd either be best friends or they'd tear each other's heads off. I've heard on the night of the crime you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe was worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason, I'm sure of it. Well then, tell us what this special monocle of yours witnessed. What I witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mask de Masque, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike when I awoke. He was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. <laughs> but of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seemed so proud of his performance that evening. Well, sir, old-timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief. But of the King of Thieves, the great Mask de Masque, my arch-enemy. That is what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm. Very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. What I witness. Okay, I can't quite remember what we need to do here. Let's start with some pressing. So that would be 1 o'clock on the morning of the 12th, correct? That's an impressive deduction, Sir Lawyer. You were on security detail that night. Where exactly security duty that night, sorry. Where exactly were you at the time? A penetrating question. I was in the basement warehouse near the computer. Near the computer, huh? 
So then you weren't trying to remain hidden, I take it. Up to this point, I have tried to remain concealed while waiting for the thief. Yeah, he said the same thing yesterday, too. Gumshoe also said that, nev that they've never spotted the thief at the crime scenes before. Precisely, that is precisely why I chose not to hide last night. I knew that by not concealing myself, it would be putting pressure on the thief. Looks like the thief was the one applying pressure on your pigeony head, that is. In any case. Dancingly descended? From where exactly? Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Um, so how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow, my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. It can only be due to his subtly camouflaged cape and soft-soled shoes. I hereby dub you Ace Dunce. Press. Do, do, do. You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened? Well, that's the difficult part. How should I put it? I saw his mask. That's all that I can recall. Hmm. That's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However, fortunately I had my third monocle, security camera, at the ready. It captured his image perfectly. This should be insufficient, I believe. Hmm, well, as long as this photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Gotto, do you have a problem with the photo? Good, then let's continue with the testimony. Now, let's have a look at that photo, because there might be something wrong with it. Not that one. <laughs> That's not, not the right photo. We want this one. Um, yeah, that, that's roughly one o'clock, so that should be all right. Attacked and knocked unconscious, and you weren't able to do a thing. That's certainly some very impressive detective work. Hm, well, sir lawyer, have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? Uh, well... Actually, yes, by a fire extinguisher. And what happened? Uh, I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. You see, you have no right to look down on, down on me then, do you? The only reason I didn't lose my memory is because I have more brains to begin with. You may have brains, but the wiring to the self-reflection part seems to be severed. In any case, that was how I was knocked senseless. And then... About this 30 minutes, my silver cord was loosened and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysium. As usual, I have no idea what this guy is saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. So, what happened during those 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. That span of time has truly vanished into the ether. Just what is he going on about? There's something suspicious about Detective Atney. How could he not have noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Huh? Which piece? The real question is, why would he tell such an obvious lie? Okay, so the problem is... If Atme didn't attack at all, how did this brooch get torn off? And why is it spelt like that? Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha! This belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch-nemesis, Mask de Masque. It is, in point of fact, Mask de Masque's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. Ha! Huh. Elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Who glues on a brooch? <laughs> Not quite. It clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. 
That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective Atme. Ugh. Detective Atme, you must have thought with the thief that night. So, why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime. Uh, I... N no. Wait just a moment, sir, old timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. <laughs> I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is in the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much. <laughs> Witness, so are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. Uh, excuse me? Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I, Luke Atme, agree completely. Fight with the thief. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, Luke Atme cannot be so easily discombobulated. Com Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. Hmm. So in the end, you did catch a glimpse of Mask Damasque. Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes with which case. Th that can't be good. Hmm. Fire with the thief. Okay, um... I know there's another contradiction here, but I forget again what it is. Oh right, yeah, we, we know the, sh the Shichi Shito hit him in a certain place. I think we just object here with the Shichi Shito? No, that wasn't it. Eh, it's alright. Uh, let me just fast forward. Yeah, we lost, we lost some health there, but that's okay. We'll get it back later. Uh... I need to press a bit. Boop. So why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I had prepared a variety of other senses as well. The alarm one of those had gone off, so I had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer. Elegantly, of course. So you were momentarily vulnerable while you were working on the computer? What should I do? Should I ask some more questions? Uh, about the computer? So did that computer belong to Lordly Taylor as well? Correct. Well, except for the program that manages the data. That was specially designed by me, Luke Atme. In that case, he could have easily manipulated the data. <laughs> What's wrong, sir, lawyer? Um, what does that mean? Discombobulated. Hmm. Young people these days, they really irritate me. They allow perfectly good old words to die until everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? Now I've forgotten. What was I saying? Jeez, it's better than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. Well, it looks like we've cleared that up. You can go on with your testimony. What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, that thief had no idea that I, Luke Atme, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. Sword? You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch? Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the Shichi Shito. 
So the thief armed himself with a sword. And what about yourself, witness? You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities? But of course, in college I was the second in charge of the boxing club. I'm sorry if I failed to find that appropriately impressive. However, my opponent in the ring this time was my arch nemesis, Mask de Masque. This guy is a real piece of work. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powerishous. Powerishous? Powerishous? I assumed the at me fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. Right, we need to find out about the at me fighting stance and then we can present the sword. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? What is this at me fighting style? Stance. It's not a style, Mike. <laughs> Phoenix, it's a stance. Pay attention. I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say anymore. But. I suppose I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Stance. Stance, Phoenix. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? It was very important. Of course it's important. We've learned the detective's secret technique after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone late at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now then, witness. We'll go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony. Okay, so now we can present the sword, I'm pretty sure. Objection! Yeah, okay. Detective Atme, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, Sir Lawyer. It's truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armoured feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now you testified that he struck you in the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. Ugh. It seems I I've made another mistake. Detective at me, that's not the only strange part of your testimony. W what do you mean by that? For example... The very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Maybe he just doesn't like cops. Come on, Phoenix. Uh, uh, Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's wrong. To err is human, forgive divine. Humans aren't machines, they have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate, and yes, they even make mistakes. Hey, hold on, it's not as pretty as that. Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end, that's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... Mr. Atme is Mask de Masque. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke Atme's true identity is actually Mask de Masque. Yeah. Hands up who saw this coming. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts of Mr. Abney's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scene. Scenes. Scenes? That's a typo. Which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. Th that's because... I analysed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... 
Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that, Detective at me. The truth is that you are, in fact, Master Maske. Gark! <laughs> but, but, Mr. Wright, th this photo, it clearly shows Master Maske. This security camera belongs to Lord Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. Why? D this isn't Shadowrun. If having it belong to someone else doesn't mean you can't mess with it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security, then he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. Is this true, witness? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Demaske's M.O. is pure genius, and so am I, Luke Atme, Ace Detective. You're very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I'm impressed, sir, lawyer. What? Witness, you... you're admitting it? N Nick, now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective Atme, when you assume the thief's identity... Gotto Blend, number 102. My personal favourite. <laughs> Mr. Gotto! The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But Mr. Gotto, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points and I... I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of whole cloth. But it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt. Mr. Trite. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see this de decisive proof you have, quickly. Huh? Oh, y yes, of course. W what's the big rush? Are you alright, Nick? Atme looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can. But can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke Atme is in fact Mask de Maske. Um... I don't think we have it. Proof? Uh, of course I, I... I've got nothing. Ha. Huh. Just what I thought. A man has to hold his head up high no matter how bad things get after all. Ugh. I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this guy's the thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. B but are you going to just give up and let us lose this? So, you've come to your senses, have you, sir lawyer? I... Uh, uh, I can't think of a counterattack at all. Seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. How? Mr. Gotto, if you have anything further to add, then... <gasps> Who... Oh, it's Desi! Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Ms. Delight, what are you doing here? Nicky boy, the thing you've been looking for. I think I found it. You mean, that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well, that's... The sacred urn! Nick, it's the urn! Order, 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 you, madame. That urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective, Luke Atme. Oh, Desi, you're the best. Sacred urn updated in the court record. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Atme? 
Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Objection. Huh. Pathetic. Mr. Goddard, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. You're still denying that Mr. Atme was involved? Before casting aspersions at Detective Atme, consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight. Is that correct? Y yes what about it? Ha. How charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. Are truly inspiring. Lengths. Plural. Come on, Goddo. <laughs> what are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that soul and urn anywhere. Including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just brought it here from that detective's office. Please, madame. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong. I would never. I would never do such a thing. Mr. Light. Please, Nicky boy. You've got to help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Erm was actually in the Atme Detective Agency. Let's look for fingerprints on the Erm. I can prove where the Erm was. By the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Oh, come now. Now you're really making me laugh, Sir Lawyer. Fingerprints indeed! May I go on? Good. Now, it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I am always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about it, Mr. Wright? This witness's fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. N Nick, what are you going to do now? I've come too far to turn back now. Atme must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. Profiles. Me. <laughs> yeah, I have a profile for myself in this case because I need to be able to present it. I think this is the only case where this happens. So what is all this fuss about fingerprints anyway? Mr. Atme, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey Nick, come on, open it up! Hey, wait a minute, we can't just open his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy, this is an important investigation. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kinda hard and smooth. Well, hello there. It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at that time, but I did touch what was inside. What? Y y you touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. Well, uh, that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints in that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves the urn was in Detective Atme's office. Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. What did you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was yesterday at the Atme Detective Agency. Huh. This blend, Goto blend number 107. I've decided. It's a little too bitter after all. Order, order, order. Accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait, 
Wait a moment, Your Honor. There's no need for that. M no need, you say? Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. Well, what are you saying? Yes, I've finally broken him down. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only Mask de Masque. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. <laughs> well, Mr. Gotto, what's Mr. Atme's condition? He's still in the lobby, laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of Thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight really wasn't the thief. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. <gasps> You're wrong, wrong I tell you. Uh, um, I mean, not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I was really trying to say. Oh no, he's not, this can't be happening. The thief, the sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me, I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty, please. I don't know what kind of a kangaroo court you all think this is, but... The true identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry up and pass judge... What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Goddard, don't just stand there drinking coffee. Ha. Huh. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y yes, yes, sir. If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are Mask de Masque, then prove it. That's what it means. Y yes, sir. I'll be happy to. It says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kind of cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in his life to become a man. I, I know that. I, I won't fail. I swear. Okay, then. Talk. We're all listening. Oh, well. Let's all have a listen to this confession. <laughs> Mask de Masque's identity. The truth is, I've been Mask de Masque all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm not actually Mask de Masque, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo. That's me! As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and it got torn off, that's all. Not even Ron pronounces brooch correctly. <laughs> hmm. I don't like the direction this trial has taken. But this is how every trial goes. At least with me, anyway. Ha. Huh. You're doing great. <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Goddo. You're embarrassing me. Like I said, you're only going to get one chance to testify, alright? But if you make it through this with flying colours, I'll keep my promise, too. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true Mask de Masque. Thanks so much, Mr. Gotto. I, I'll do my best. All right, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid it's time for the cross-examination. <sighs> okay. Okay, so... The thing is, uh, you do have an alibi. Uh... Because your wallet was in the building around the, the night of the crime. Uh, we don't have records for KB security, though. Um, you've got no alibi? I've been a judge for a long time. 
and this is the first time I've ever heard a defendant brag about having no alibi. But I tell you I was in Lordly Taylor that night. Uh, no. That's too vague, even for me. To be more precise, I was down in the basement of my house. Hold on. What is it, Nick? Where was Ron Delight when the crime happened anyway? If we can prove he had an alibi after all, this case will be a piece of cake. Well, you're right, but... Huh. You think you can prove that? Wake up and smell the coffee. Well, I think maybe I can. Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence that shows the defendant has an alibi? I do, actually. I'm just going to throw down a quick save. There we go. I have the evidence. Or do you think I'm still some sort of third-rate rookie? Oh, I I've never seen you this angry before. I'm not surprised. Anger is the last refuge of the pathetic. I thought I was more confident than angry. Well then, let's see this evidence already. Show it to this court evidence that proves where your client was on the night of the crime. Uh, we have this letter. 1am on the night of the crime, which is the time of the crime. KB Security. Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Ah, that's... What is it? A blackmail letter. That's what it looks like from the contents. B blackmail? According to this letter, at one o'clock in the morning on the night of the crime, Mr. Ron Delight was ordered to go to the offices of KB Security. One o'clock in the morning? Correct. Which is around the time the security camera photo was taken. So if the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, then that proves he has a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lordly Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car, according to Larry anyway. Well, Mr. Gotto, do you have anything to say? And stop drinking that coffee. Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the only one who calls me thief, Mr. Gotto. Alright, I'll try. I I'll do it. I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. Yeah, he's like a kid at his first day of school. Mr. Wright, it's true that I received that blackmail letter. But, whether or not I actually went there is a whole different story, right? Oh, uh, sorry if I'm sounding dramatic. I guess I don't know what I'm talking about. Huh, that was brilliant. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, looks like you need some more evidence after all. Grr, this stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. Demonstrate to this court that Mr. Delight actually went to KB Security that night. Uh, well, his wallet was there. Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Ah, y yes, it does. I, I lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when you find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Ah, uh, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice that you'd lost your wallet? Uh, let's see. I think it was on the night of the crime. But I know I still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1am at KB Security Headquarters. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. This proves that Mr. Delight was in fact at KB Security that night. No! Ha. Huh. This is indeed sad. Romanticists are blind to the reality that lies before them. Huh? What does that mean? Why did Mr. Delight drop his wallet at KB Security? What purpose did it serve? Perhaps it was dropped by his wife to create a false alibi for her dear husband instead. Sorry, but Mr. Delight probably dropped it himself when he went to use this. The keycard to KB Security's CEO's office. CEO's office? What's wrong? No snappy comebacks. The fact is that Mr. Delight entered the CEO's office around 1 o'clock that night. Ugh. Ugh. No, 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 no! He says while drinking coffee somehow. <laughs> order, order, order! 
So when the theft, when the theft of the owner occurred, the defendant was at KB security. It was like a perfect case for the defense. You may see it as a perfect case, Judge, but to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot Blend number 107 impresses me a lot more. What are you trying to say? You say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company? But, did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no, I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof? I'm not sure what I think of that. I'm not sure what I think of that? At least I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim that the defendant entered the CEO's office. But you will need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Riot. Nick, I think we're gonna have to track down that CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Triad? There is someone else who can testify. This is the person who can testify that the key card was used at 1am that night. Uh, it's Larry. Where's Larry? There he is. Who is this useless looking young man? You don't remember him, Your Honor? Hmm, not exactly. Just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my throat. Looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. He probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working as a guard at KB Security that night. Oh? The question at hand is, this keycard. Yup, that's the keycard they use in the building I work. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. You need it to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Hmm... As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to discover the truth simply by analysing this keycard's data. <laughs> well, Mr. Gotto, the name of the CEO of KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but I got the keycard data here. So, what does it show? Each keycard has its own serial number and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1am on the morning of the crime. He got updated in the court record. But that means... It can't be Mr. Delight protest as Mask to Maske in this photo. I mean, someone else could have used Ron's keycard. Ha. Huh. It looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even enough time to brew a good cup of joe. So, so then. Ron Delight was clearly in the office of KB Security's CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be masked to mask gay. Good job, you did it, Nick! That's enough. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of thief. What's wrong, Your Honor? I'm ready to pass judgement, but before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, Your Honour. Hmm. Uh, very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, not guilty. Confetti! Yay! Court is now adjourned. October 13, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 4. Nick, you did it! You were right after all! Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy! Oh, Ms. Delight. I knew you could do it. I believed in you all along, Nicky boy. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Oh, shucks. Thanks, Ms. Delight. I just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick! Oh, Pearls! I've got a bad feeling about this. <gasps> Who is this woman? 
Oh, she she's nobody. She's just uh You're blushing. How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya? You should be ashamed of yourself. Youch! She slapped me. Um, Pearly. This woman is Miss 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 Desiree Delight. She's our client's wife. <gasps> Mr. Nick! Y yes? You're even worse than I thought! Going behind the back of your own client! N no, you've got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Oh, Pearl. Ow, a double slap. Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? We got the sacred urn back and the thief has been caught. You're so right, and it's all thanks to Nicky Boy here. But actually it was you, Ms. Delight, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Aww. Oh, please, you're embarrassing me. We won the case. Then why does this guy still look so glum? Because he wanted to get found guilty, Phoenix. Ugh, but I am the thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I, I know that, and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on, give the kids some time. He's just got a little touch of the blues. You know about feeling blue, right, amigo? M Mr. Gotto, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. Maybe you should learn my name before you call me buddy. Well, playtime is over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Cain Bullard was discovered. Cain Bullard? Where have I heard that name before? Isn't that the name of the CEO of KB Security? Wait, b body? The estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. 1 a.m. on October 12th? Y you don't mean... That's right, amigo. At the same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. S so then, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or... Have you already forgotten about that piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out? What? On October 12th at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office, the scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbrued with utter rage. What are you saying? Imbrued with rage? Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. An employee of KB Security? Looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the noose that gets him hanged. Kind of an anti-alibi. No way. He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. N no, that's a lie. It can't be true. Oh, oh, but, but I, I am a thief, I tell you. Ron Delight, you're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't... This is impossible. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick, is there something personal between you two? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least, let me have some fun while I'm here. This guy, who the heck is he? He may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. N Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder. And the, and the one who established his presence at the scene was me. Yeah, Ronnie! Arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck's going to happen next? To be continued. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we investigate a murder. 
<laughs> this case is amazing. <laughs> Bye.